Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Killer having a 263 and riding a five-game hit streak. The leadoff against veteran Lou Burdett, who has been used as a relief pitcher and spot starter. He is starting his sixth ball game of the year, and the first time this year he has started against New York. Fidgety Lou has a lifetime record against the Mets of six wins and three losses. Richie Allen in close at third against Chuck Hiller. Now Burdett into his windup. Here's the pitch. Ground ball slashed to short. Bobbled by Bobby Wine. It goes to the outfield. Hiller around first is on safely. It's an error charge to Bobby Wine on a hard hit grounder off the bat of Chuck Hiller. Broke right off of his glove and went on into the outfield and left center. Brings up Roy McMillan. Back hitting 228. Now the Phillies have the infield at double play depth. The outfield just about straight away against Roy McMillan. Johnny Lewis, the on deck batter. Pitch by Burdett. He turns around to bunt. Bunt's foul back against the screen. No play. Yogi Berra coaching at first base. On the lines at third, Don Hefner. uses a slightly overly closed fence. Feet not too far apart. Full swing and a line drive out towards short right. A base hit. Around second is Hiller trying for third. Now he tries to get back and he's hung up between second and third. Line to Allen. Allen running him back and Allen makes the tag. Hiller is tagged out by Richie Allen. He got hung up between second and third. Soft line drive base hit into right field. You can't run on Johnny Callison. Killer rounded second and realized he could not run on Callison. Slammed on the brakes, but it was far too late. Callison had detected and threw in behind him. Base hit for Roy McMillan. Miller is out from Johnny Callison to Bobby Wine to Richie Allen. Now Johnny Lewis is the batter. Runner on first, Roy McMillan, one out. Outside in the high, it's ball one. Well, Johnny hiked his batting average 23 points with a tremendous day yesterday in Chicago. Johnny had seven hits in the doubleheader, including two home runs. He's now hitting 260. Dick Stewart holding against Roy McMillan. Pitch to Johnny Lewis, inside and low. Lou Burdett goes behind on Lewis, two balls and no strikes. Johnny had four hits and five times at bat in the first game yesterday, and he had three hits and five at bats in the second ball game. So it was quite a day, seven for ten. Four runs batted in. Low and outside, 3-0 and oh on Johnny Lewis. Now 
Johnny checking with Coach Don Hefner to see if he has the green light. We're just underway. First inning. Skies are overcast. It rained quite a bit this afternoon. Fastball and a strike. He took it all the way. It's three and one. Batting practice and infield practice was bypassed here this evening due to the rain. It was raining until about 45 minutes before game time when it subsided. Then about 20 minutes before game time, the ground crew came out to take the tarp off. Not a drop falling right now. Foul tipped with a runner going. No play, and it's three and two on Johnny Lewis. Smith is the cleanup batter. Charlie waiting on deck, waiting to hit against his former teammates. Now Lou Burdett is up into the stretch. Here's the pitch on the way. Foul ball hit down the first baseline. No play. Let's play the Phillies this weekend here at County Mac Stadium and then come back home. They will open their homestand against the Pirates on Tuesday night at Shea Stadium. Game time, 8 p.m. Galen Sisko shut out Chicago on a very solid four-hitter in the first game yesterday. Winning his third of the year, and Galen will probably open the homestand against the Bucks on Tuesday night. Now McMillan leads away. He's running three and two as Lowood inside ball four and Lewis reaches on a walk. Roy McMillan going to second. That brings up Charlie Smith. Charlie had four hits in the doubleheader yesterday. Johnny Lewis and Charlie Smith right now are swinging the most potent bats in the lineup. Charlie hitting 269 with 10 home runs and 38 runs batted in. And Charlie is hit by a pitch on the shoulder. That loads the bases and brings up Joe Christopher. Charlie Smith nicked high on the left shoulder with a pitch thrown by Lou Burdett, and that loads him up. Roy McMillan moving to third, Johnny Lewis to second, and Charlie Smith going down to first. Like the professional ball player that he is, Charlie refusing to give Burdett the satisfaction of even rubbing it. So there's no way of telling exactly where the ball hit him. jam. Joe Christopher hitting. Joe has been used almost exclusively as a pinch hitter in recent weeks. But with Ron Swoboda going into a batting slump, interim manager Wes Westrom decided to rest Swoboda and Christopher is in the lineup tonight in left field. Joe finished last year as a 300 hitter. Now the pitcher on the way. And he hits it high in the air. A fly ball to fairly deep right center field. McMillan tags up. Callison makes the catch. The run will score. The play is going to third, and it's cut off. The Mets lead 1-0. McMillan crossing the plate on the sacrifice fly to rather deep right center. Now runners on first and third, two down, and Gary Kolb is the hitter. Gary batting 261 has hit safely now in the last four ball games. Inside and low. One ball and no strikes. Now Lou 
Brewer, that up in pitching position, delivers to Cole a foul tip. One ball and one strike on Gary. Gary, a left-hand hitter, solidly built six-footer who runs extremely well. Not a power hitter, but the type of hitter who hits the ball sharply. Line drive hitter who shoots for the alleys in left center and right center. The 1-1 delivery. A ground ball hit to second base. Rojas comes up. He throws to second base for the force play on the side is out. He must have momentarily forgotten there were two men down. Two men down. So the side is out. One run, one hit, one error, and two left on. And the score in the middle of the first, the Mets won and the Phillies coming to bat. Now you're going to hear a terribly sad song about a man who's unlucky in love, but lucky in beer. From the little cafes of Romania comes the song about Yonelule, who drinks to forget the fire that burns his heart because marijuana doesn't love him. Even if you're not on fire like poor Yonelule, you can work up a passionate Romanian thirst with spicy salamale, and then will very likely call for a Rheingold. It's a fact that in New York City, where there are more Romanians than in Bailesh, more people drink Rheingold Extra Dry than any other beer. How come? Maybe you can find out at your local Pivnica. But we must be doing something right. Cookie Rojas leading off for Philadelphia. Cookie having a good year. He's batting at 297. Tony Taylor and Johnny Briggs who were in that three-way collision with Johnny Callison at Shea Stadium last Friday night. Both had the stitches removed this afternoon. Both can be used by manager Gene Mock. Al Jackson winds the pitch to Rojas. A ground ball knocked down by Smitty. He picks it up, throws. Not in time. Rojas is on. Rojas hitting the first pitch. Smitty tried to make the backhand play, whirling and reaching across toward the bag. It goes as an infield hit. Now Johnny Callison coming up. Callison has hit 22 home runs and knocked 70 runs in. He's challenging the league leaders in both departments. He had a good year power-wise last year, and he's doing even better this year. Left-hand hitter and a gifted all-around performer. He bunts it. Off the mound comes Al Jackson. Picks it up. Throws in time on a close play at first base. Rojas moving over to second. One out, a runner at second, and Richie Allen is coming up. Since the Frank Thomas incident that resulted in Thomas being placed on irrevocable waivers and going on to Houston. Richie Allen comes up to hit here at County Max Stadium. He is greeted by a mixture of applause and baboos. Richie, right hand batter and a solid hitter, pitched by Jackson. And the curve is over at the outside corner, strike one. Richie Allen is hitting 318 with 12 home runs and 56 runs batted in. Swing and a miss. He went after a knee-high fastball. Last 
half of inning number one, New York in front, one nothing. Venus Lowry coaching at first. Gene Mock directing his ball club off the Lions at third. Now Jackson whirls to chase the runners back. just barely got a piece of it. Count remains strike two on Richie Allen. Jackson had great stuff his last time out against Philadelphia and he lost a real tough one. Cookie Rojas on second, one man out. Cleanup banner, Dick Stewart is the on deck hitter. Now Jackson up in the set position. Delivers to the plate. A foul ball right straight back once again, and the count stays. Strike two. Well, Dr. Principati, the Midtown Manhattan radiologist, who is such a great Mets fan, is here on the occasion of the Mets playing the Phillies in Casey Stingle's 75th birthday, and he must have about at least 50 friends and Mets fans with him. All wearing the hard yellow hats. The dark lettering of Let's Go Mets. Two-strike delivery. Get high in the air, a fly ball to right field. Drifting back is Johnny Lewis. Johnny's getting under it. He makes the catch. Here comes Rojas across. Here's the peg, not in time. Two outs, Rojas on third. Dick Stewart coming up. have the infield back. Two men down. Rojas on third. Stewart the hitter. Fastball outside. One ball and no strikes. His hitting has really perked up of late. Stewart has 17 home runs. 51 runs batted in. Batting at 233. He has the distinction of having hit a home run in each of the major league ballparks. Now the pitch on the way. Fastball right in. A good pitch by Jackson. And the count one ball, one strike. In the game tomorrow afternoon, the Phillies will have Chris Short on the mound. The Mets will be pitching Jack Fisher. And Sunday in the final game of the road trip, it'll be Jim Bunning against probably Tom Parsons. Pitching one and one. Outside, ball two. It's two balls and a strike. Let's have the outfield deep and way around the left. They almost use a shift against Dick Stewart. Hiller playing just about directly behind second on the edge of the center field grass. Just a couple of strides on the right side. 2-1 pitch. Change up is fouled back up over our radio broadcasting booth. No play. Let's lead one nothing the last half of the first inning. For the Phillies, they have Cookie Rojas on third, two down. Count two and two on Stewart. Here's the pitch on the way. In the dirt, it's ball three, three and two. Jim Schaefer digging it out. out of his windup. The payoff delivery. Foul ball. He just got a piece of it. Mets have already been harder on Philadelphia this year than they were all of last season. 
Philadelphia was really tough for the Mets last year. They won 15 of the 18 ball games. This year, the Mets have won five of the nine. Stewart, a power hitter in the outfield, deep and around toward left. Jackson over the head. Pitches three and two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. No runs. One hit. No errors. One left. At the end of one, the Mets won and the Phillies nothing. Mets conclude the Philadelphia series Sunday afternoon and then return to Shea Stadium. Playing three games against Pittsburgh, two night games and a day game. The day game is sandwiched in between Tuesday and Thursday. Chicago will be in New York next weekend for a Friday night game, a Ladies' Day game Saturday. And all the fun of Banner Day with a doubleheader against the Cubs on Sunday, a week from this Sunday, August the 8th. Tickets are on sale seven days a week at the advanced sale window located at Entrance D at Shea Stadium. In Midtown Manhattan, tickets available both east side and west side for your convenience. The Mets have tickets on sale in the Long Island Railroad waiting room at Penn Station, at Grand Central Terminal near the foot of the 42nd Street and Vanderbilt Avenue ramp. For Mets fans on Long Island, tickets are on sale during regular store hours at Macy's in the Walt Whitman Shopping Center in Huntington. Reservations can be made for box and reserve seats at all Howard Clothes stores in the greater New York area. Then two instant reservation service at all Child's Restaurants and Calico Kitchens in the greater New York area. It's better for you to order by mail. Reserve seats are $2.50, box seats $3.50. Simply add 25 cents with each order for handling and postage. One ball and no strikes to Jim Hickman. Fidgety Lou Burdett takes his sign. The veteran right-hander winds and pitches. Misses the outside corner. Two balls and no strikes. Well, the group of 50 friends and Mets fans who are here from Manhattan are seated in the field box area down the right field line where the stands bend around coming out toward the line. And to further wish Casey Stingle a happy birthday, they all lighted a candle. Lined hard to left, a base hit by Jim Hickman. Ball is run down by Alex Johnson, the left fielder, and played back in. And Hickman is on with a hard-hit single. Right here we pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. It's 8.30 on 8.10 on your dial, WGY Schenectady. with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner from Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia. The Mets now sending up Jim Schaefer, right-hand batter to face Lou Burdett. Pitch thrown to Schaefer, misses the inside corner, one ball and no strikes. So even though Casey cannot be here on his 75th birthday, he is recovering from the hip surgery at Roosevelt Hospital in New York. He certainly has not been forgotten. I think it's really nice that the good doctor and all of his friends made the trip down from Manhattan to root for Casey's ball club on his birthday. Foul ball back upstairs and out of play. One ball and one strike on Jim Schaefer. Jim makes his home in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. His wife and three fine-looking young sons all made the trip back so that they could go on to Lancaster, Pennsylvania for a visit home. Now the gym will be playing in the East with the New York Mets. One-one delivery. Hit high and deep to center field, but waiting for it is the center fielder. He makes the catch with no trouble. Adolfo Phillips. Brought up from Arkansas at the time Frank Thomas was sent on to Houston. Al 
Jackson coming up to bat for the first time. Here in the early part of the game, the Mets are hitting the ball hard against Lou Burdett. John Lafitte and his Pirates sail into the famous Jones Beach Theater this summer in Guy Lombardo's Mardi Gras. It's a new musical spectacular with voodoo dancers, Dixieland jazz, the Mardi Gras ball, and all the excitement of New Orleans. Jackson around to Bunt. Bunt's fair ball off the mound is Burdett. He looks to second to Sands against it, throws to Rojas, cutting it first. Mets trying to build a run here on the top of the second and with one out. Jackson bunts Jim Hickman over to second base. Now with two men down, Chuck Hiller comes up. Chuck reached safely on an error charge to shortstop Bobby Wine in the opening inning. Chuck hitting at 263. Infield playing him to pull. Pitched by Burdett. A strike on the outside corner at the knees. At Yankee Stadium, Cleveland nothing. The Yankees nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Sonny Siebert, 10 and 6 against Al Downing, 9 and 9. Jim Hickman leads off second. The pitch by Burdett. Low and outside. One ball and one strike. Here are the warm-ups at Forbes Field in Pittsburgh. Ernie Brolio will pitch for Chicago and die well for the Pirates. Brolio, one and five on the year. He's still being troubled by an ailing arm. The resurging Don Cardwell has won eight and lost five. 1-1 delivery, ground ball hit down to first. Big hop for Stewart. He'll take the play himself on the side of out. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. At the end of an inning and a half, the New York Mets won and the Philadelphia Phils nothing. Do you drive a car? Then here's some helpful information for you. A driving tip from Shell. How safe are your brakes? Why not test them? Right now, while you're driving, you can in this easy on-the-spot road test, courtesy of your local Shell dealer. First, make sure you've got a clear road with nobody behind you. Repeat, nobody behind you. Drive at a good clip and apply your brakes with a nice, firm pressure. Car come to an even stop. Brake pedal feels solid, not soft and mushy. Congratulations, those brakes sound pretty good. But if your car pulled sharply to one side, or if your brakes chattered and complained while you were stopping, take no chances. Pull into your nearest Shell dealer. He can help you, whether you need a simple adjustment or new linings. He can also help you get good mileage with Super Shell gasoline. Super Shell with Platform 8 is specially blended by mileage experts. Super Shell in the clean white pump. of the second, Alex Johnson, the left fielder, will be leading off against Al Jackson. Johnson becoming quite a favorite here in Philadelphia. He's having a big year in his second season. Johnson hitting 327, has five home runs and 12 RBIs. He's been going uh, real hot of late. He's hit in 14 of his last 15 ball games. Jackson winds. Here's his pitch. Ground ball hit hard. Backhand play by Smitty. Long throw. He got him. Beautiful play by Charlie Smith. He took a double away from Alex Johnson. No doubt about it. He is really dealing a hot hand right now. He hit that one hard. Now the batter is the rookie center fielder, Adolfo Phillips. He's a right-hand batter. He has good power. He hit better than 30 home runs to the Coast League last year, and he was hitting a lot of home runs again this year when he was brought up from the Arkansas Club of the Pacific Coast League. 
He took the spot on the roster vacated by Frank Thomas. Curve is in. Strike one call. Jackson into his windup delivers a swing and a miss and a fastball in the count strike two. Adolfo Phillips got into the lineup and started playing regularly after that freeway collision at Stay Shea Stadium last Friday night. Little Al Jackson with a two strike count on Adolfo Phillips right hand batter. Now the pitch on the way. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. He got him with a quick one. Second strike out by Jackson. He got Dick Stewart in the first inning. Now two outs and nobody on. And Pat Corrales, the catcher, comes up. This hitting has been a very pleasant surprise to Gene Mock since he came up from Arkansas. He's hitting 321. He has real good size. He was catching at Arkansas, but when Gus Triandos was dealt to Houston, they brought Corrales up. Fastball in, strike one call. Breeze blowing from right across toward left, favoring the right-hand batter. Up curve is foul back against the screen. Jackson pulled the string. And now a two strike count on Pat Corrales. Tomorrow and Sunday, the Mets will be up against the top two pitchers on the Philadelphia staff. They hit against Chris Short tomorrow and Jim Bunning on Sunday afternoon. Jackson takes his sign now from Jim Schaefer. The two-strike delivery. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. Or did he hold up in time? He held up in time, says umpire Vinnie Smith. A low breaking ball that Corrales really started after. He must have strong wrists to stop that one. And the count, one ball and two strikes. That didn't bring much of an argument from anybody, and so they were all in accord with umpire Vinnie Smith. Pitching one and two. Curve inside and low. It's two and two on Pat Corrales. Corrales coming up through the Philadelphia farm system. in for his sign. Two outs and nobody on. Last of the second. New York in front. one nothing. Jackson winding the 2-2 delivery. Curve is inside of the knees. He made the hitter move back on that and now the string is out. Three and two. I don't know how it'll be later. And it was doubtful this afternoon. But right now it's a very pleasant evening. It started raining in the early afternoon. 3-2 delivery. Ball four. Jackson was out in front on Pat Corrales with a two-strike count, but he loses him. Well, a pitcher really hates that. The thing a pitcher would rather do than anything else in the world is get that first pitch by the hitter for a strike so he can be working in front. And any time he gets a hitter two strikes and then walks him, he really hates it. Bobby Wine is the batter. Bobby hitting a 202, tall, slender right hand hitter. Straddles the plate and takes the breaking ball inside. One ball and no strike.
Jim Hickman holding against base runner Pat Corrales. It's over for a strike on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Bobby Wine delivered a big hit for Philadelphia in their shutout victory over Pittsburgh at Forbes Field last night. Bills are elated about the pitching of late of right-hander Ray Culp. 1-1 delivery. Hit high and deep. The left field by Bobby Wine. It is up, going, and gone. season. It was a king-size home run. Pitchman got away from Jackson. It was up, and Wyand really tagged it. It sailed into the upper deck in left field. Inside and low to Lou Burdett. One ball and no strikes. So the walk to Pat Corrales really proves costly. Little Al had Corrales two strikes, and then he lost him. And Bobby Wyand yanks one into the upper deck and left for a two-run homer. Wibbler hit on the ground. Jackson racing off the mound. Picks it up. Throws to Hickman in time, getting Burdett, and the side is out. But a walk and a home run by Bobby Wine puts Philadelphia out in front. Two runs, one hit. No errors, none left on. The home run by Bobby Wine, his first of the season. At the end of two innings, the score, the Phillies two and the New York Mets one. Afternoon game tomorrow and an afternoon game on Sunday. Monday night, the Mets have an exhibition ball game against their Williamsport Mets team in the Eastern League. And then Tuesday night, led by the National League batting champion Roberto Clemente, his own teammate who's challenging him for the lead, Don Clendenin, power hitter Willie Stargell, who is vying for the home run and RBI lead. The Pittsburgh Pirates come in to open a three-game series. That'll be Tuesday night. Wednesday afternoon, Senior Citizens Day. That's the day for the young at heart. The day when the senior citizens, 60 and over, are admitted for 50 cents. Then a night game on Thursday night. The Cubs come in Friday night, Saturday afternoon, a Ladies' Day game. And all the fun of Banner Day on Sunday, a week from this Sunday, the 8th of August, as the Mets and Cubs play a twin bill. Mets are encouraging all of the young fans to enter the Banner Day Contest. First and second prizes will be awarded to each category by Macy's. They also will present a grand prize. The banners go on parade between games of the doubleheader. The judging takes place on the ground level at home plate. It was great last year. It was more fun than anything you could imagine. I'm sure it will be again this year. So don't miss it. Banner Day at Shea Stadium a week from Sunday, the 8th of August. Right here, it's the third inning at County Mark Stadium, and to paint the word picture for you, Ralph Kiner. Thank you, Bob, and hi there, everyone. It's going to be Roy McMillan, the leadoff for the Mets here in the top of the third. They now trail by one as a result of the two-run home run by Bobby Wine, his first this year. Roy's batting for the second time. His average at 228. First time up, he sacrificed, and he takes the strike from Lou Burdett. Make a correction that he got a base hit to right field his first time up. On the play, Chuck Killer overran second base and was picked off by Johnny Callis on the right fielder. Pitch back is hit in the air to center field. Adolfo Phillips calling forward a shade toward right center, and he makes the catch. That'll bring up Johnny, Johnny Lewis. Johnny walked his first time up on a 3-2 pitch. His average at 260 for the year after a great series against the Cubs. He was 7 for 10 in the doubleheader last Sunday. Left-hand batter. Always lead by a 2-1 to one margin. One man away in the top of the third. 
And a ground ball base hit the right field, and Johnny continues to hit the ball well. He holds at first base as Johnny Callison fields the ball in shallow right field. And the Mets have the tie run at first base with one away and Charlie Smith coming up. Charlie was hit by a pitch ball his first time up. On the first pitch, Lou Burdett got him on the left shoulder. The pitch was right at him. He had no chance to get out of the way. Burdett weathered a tough first inning, giving up one run. He pitched the six batters, left two men on. In the second, Burdett gave a base hit but left one on and now has a runner at first base in the top of the third with one out. Phillies with two runs and two hits. The Mets have one run and three. Lou Burdett with a record of 0-4 this year. He won no games for the Cubs and has yet to win here. And the first pitch, a slider outside, ball one. Charlie batting 269 with 10 home runs and 38 runs batted in. This is Burdett's 17th appearance, his sixth start this year, his first for the Phillies. And the pitch back, a fastball, a hard swing, and a foul back in the screen. Pitch up around the eyes. One ball, one strike. Wind was blowing in from right field during the afternoon. There was some pretty heavy shower activity in the area, and then later on it turned out to be a very fine drizzle. But about a half an hour before game time, weather cleared up and the ball game got underway in perfect order. Outfield just a little bit heavy around third base near the coaching box. It's a little bit heavy. The rest of the infield in perfect shape. One ball, one strike, and the pitch back to Charlie. Again foul back on the screen. Now moving to one and two. On deck batter, Joe Christopher. That's trailing by one. Phillies in fifth place. They trail the Dodgers by six and a half games. For the ball game, and Gene Mock was saying that he thought that they would have a good chance to get back in and pull it all away. Now the one-two pitch. And the ball getting away from the catcher as it bounces in the dirt. Going down to second base, Johnny Lewis, he halfway rounds toward third base and holds there as Pat Corrales comes up with the ball. So it'll be a wild pitch. The ball bounced in the dirt, and the count now at two balls and two strikes. Charlie Smith, one man out. The Mets with a tying run at second base. And Lou Burdett in the set position. His pitch back to the plate. Hit in the air to center field. Adolfo Phillips moving to his right, waiting for it to come down. Lewis tagged up. He's going to go to third. Here comes the throw. It is not in time, and Johnny goes in standing up. So the Mets have a runner third with two away, and the batter coming up is Joe Christopher. Joe drove in the Mets' run in the first inning with a sacrifice fly to right field. For Joe, his 25th RBI in the year, he's betting at 237. Has two home runs. Phillies lead 2-1 to one with two men out in the top of the third. Christopher, a right-hand batter, standing with a closed stance deep in the batter's box. And Burdett into the windup and his first pitch to Christopher, a sidearm fastball that's in for call strike. Pitch right at the knee. Home plate umpire, Vinny Smith. At first base, Ed Sudol, Billy Williams, the umpire at second base, and Tom Gorman, the crew chief, the umpire at third. One strike count on Joe Christopher. Lou Burdett taking the signs from Pat Corrales. Outfield fairly deep. Pulled over toward the left side. And now Burdett with a look at third. Now into the windup and to the plate. 
And the pitch is bounced down toward short. Coming over Bobby Wine. A half off. He handles it perfectly. He throws to first base for the out. And a good play by Bobby Wine. Handling the very tough off. Every time to side. No runs on one hit. No errors. And one man left. And the score at the end of two and a half. The Phillies two. The Mets one. Here's a very sad French-Canadian song about a fellow who lost the key of his clarinet. Listen. J'ai perdu le dos de ma clarinette is a song with the kind of humor French Canadians love. But one song leads to another, and the first that follows is no laughing matter. is what they'll sing as they reach for a beer, probably Rheingold Extra Dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more different kinds of people than in any other city in the world, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. Why do French Canadians like Rheingold? We don't know, but we must be doing something right. Bottom half the third, but the Phillies coming up against Al Jackson. Al so far has given up two runs. He allowed in his first two innings two base hits, but one of them a home run by Bobby Wine with a man on. Home run coming after a walk to Pat Corrales. Now the first man up will be Cookie Rojas batting for the second time. He had one pitch and got a base hit to third base. A hard smash that Charlie Smith knocked down and couldn't make a play on. Now he swings at the first pitch and hits it foul. George Myatt, the third base coach, bobbling the ball before throwing the ball out of play. One strike count on Cookie Rojas. Cookie batting at 297 at the start of the ball game. And the one strike delivery, it is a change up curve that's in the dirt. It's ball one. One ball and one strike. It'll be Cookie Rojas, Johnny Callison, and Richie Allen against Al Jackson here in the bottom half of the third. And the 1-1 delivery, a fastball hit in the hole. It's a base hit on through in the left field. Rojas goes to first base and holds there. So the Phillies have their lead batter on at first base in the third, and it brings up Johnny Callison. Second hit of the ball game for Rojas. Third hit off Al Jackson and Johnny Callison stepping in. At Pittsburgh, the Pirates scored a run in the bottom half of the first inning against the Cubs. They lead 1-0. Ernie Brolio pitching for Chicago and Don Cardwell going for the Pirates. Let's play the Pirates next Tuesday night when they come on home for a one-week homestand. Also, the Cubs come into the ballpark after the Pirates leave for the weekend. Throw to first base, no tag made by Jim Hickman as Rojas was back easily. Johnny Callison batting at 265. Left hand batter with 22 home runs and 70 runs batted in. And his first pitch, a high slider, it's ball one. Houston is scheduled at Cincinnati for a night game. San Francisco, Milwaukee, Bob Shaw pitching for the Giants against Hank Fisher. And the Dodgers will play in St. Louis under the lights tonight. One ball, no strike count on Johnny Callison. And Jackson back again and high again. A fastball this time, it's ball two. Throw to first base, no tag made as Rojas was back easily. 2-0 and oh on Johnny Callison, and he now looks down at the third base coach. and leads the league in triples with 12. Rojas with a good-sized lead. He does not go on the pitch. is deep to right. And it's fair to the extra bases. It is a home run. to 
Bellingham with a home run right down the right field line, burying the fence by about a foot. He is now tied for the National League leadership with Willie Mays. That was his 23rd home run. And it puts the Phillies in front, 4-1. to one. The run's coming on 2-2 two, two run home run. Scoring ahead, Cookie Rojas. Now the batter is Richie Allen. He takes low with ball one. Doug McGraw now throwing in the bullpen for the men. That ball was right down the line. It couldn't have been fair by more than a foot. And it just cleared the wall, which is a high one here in Philadelphia, by about a foot. A line drive home run. A changeup hit foul. Counted one ball, one strike. Richie Allen going for a slow curve that was low and inside and dribbling the ball off to the left. One ball, one strike count. Al Jackson now with the sign. Into the windup and back again. And the pitch is taken in there for strike two. Phillies using all their hits to advantage. Four runs on four hits. The Mets have one, one, and three. No one out. We're in the bottom half of the third. And now Jackson now back again. And he misses outside with a fastball. He counted two balls and two strikes. Two balls, two strikes. The next pitch, a curveball outside, and it's ball three. Three and two on Richie Allen. Richie batting at 318. He has 12 home runs and 56 runs batted in. And Jackson at 3 2. And the pitch is high and away, ball four. Now Jackson walks his second man. He has yet to pick up an out here in the bottom half of the third, and Jim Schaefer goes out to the mound. Batter coming up is Dick Stewart. While we wait for Schaefer to come back to give the signs, we'll step out now for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. When you're tuned to WGY, 8, 10 on the dials, Schenectady, your station for Mets baseball. Ralph Kiner, along with Bob Murphy and Lindsey Nelson from Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia with the Phillies leading 4-1. to And now Wes Westrom has come out to the pitcher's mound to confer with Al Jackson. Mets have a left-hander, Tug McGraw. Juan McGraw. Warming up in the bullpen. Phillies with a runner at first base. And Dick Stewart, the next batter, coming up. In the American League, Detroit is scheduled at Chicago for a night game, Baltimore at Minnesota for a night game, Washington at Kansas City for a night game, and Boston at Los Angeles for a night game. In a game underway, the Yankees nothing, Cleveland nothing after two. Sonny Siebert pitching for the Indians against Al Downing. For the Yankees. One game underway in the National League. Pittsburgh won, Chicago nothing after one. Brolio against Cardwell. Right here, it's a 4 1 game. Jackson is in, he's ready to pitch, and here's his first pitch to Stewart. It is low for ball one. Wes Westrom, the manager pro tem for the Mets, back to the fence, leaving Al Jackson in the pitch to Dick Stewart. Dick was struck out. Swinging at a curveball his first time up. His average at 233. He has 17 home runs. And the pitch back almost hits him. A breaking pitch. It's ball two. Two balls, no strike. Mets had the early lead in the first, in case you just joined us. Scoring a run in the top of the first against Lou Burdett. Well, he's took it away with a two-run home run by Bobby Wine in the second. Now I've added two more here in the third and a two-run home run by Johnny Callison. The throw to first base, Richie Allen back with no trouble. Two balls, no strikes. Dick Stewart, the batter. Now Jackson sets again. His pitch to the plate, a hard swing at a fastball. Stewart just behind. They count two balls, one strike. Phillies 
four runs on four hits. The Mets one run on three. No one out. Bottom half the third. And Jackson with the 2 1 delivery. It is low and outside. It's ball three. So Al Jackson missing with his control, just missing. And behind now on Stewart, three balls and one strike. On deck batter, a right hand batter, Alex Johnson. Richie Allen leading off at first base. Jackson looking there. He does not go, and the pitch is hit foul. Ball bouncing away, and the count goes all the way out at three and two. Phillies getting two home runs in this ball game. Now have a total of 94 throughout the season. That is third in the National League. Milwaukee in first place, and Cincinnati in second, and delivering home runs. Mets have a total of 73 this year. Now the 3 2 pitch. The runner does not go, and the ball bounce foul. So the count will stay at three balls and two strikes. Stewart is known for strikeouts, but this is one club he'll not have to worry about leading in strikeouts. Although they don't keep the figures on the strikeout totals and the stat records, last time a week ago, a leader on the Philadelphia Ball Club was Richie Allen. He had struck out 98 times up through last Sunday. At that pace, he'll set an all-time record in the National League. Stewart was at 69. Here's a 3-2 pitch with the runner going. A line drive caught by Roy McMillan. An easy double play. Richie Allen at second base when the ball was caught. A throw over to first base to complete the double play. And two men are out. Three and two. A soft line drive hit the Roy McMillan. And the ball suddenly right in his hands. And Richie Allen, who was moving on down to second, couldn't stop and had no chance to get back. getting their 104th double play in the season, and that brings up Alex Johnson. Alex was out on a great play by Charlie Smith his first time up. He's batting at 327, a right-hand batter. And Jackson with a curveball in for call strike. One strike gun on the right-hand batter. Johnson with five home runs and 12 runs batted in. He stands with a closed stance, fairly deep in the box, and now Jackson back to work. And the pitch is swung on a miss. A slider over the inside part of the plate, right off the hand, strike two. Phillies with two runs in here in the bottom half of the third. They lead four to one with two men away. And the next pitch back as a fastball popped up toward the right side, going back into a shallow right field. Chuck Hiller, he calls for it, and he makes the play to retire the side. In the inning, the Phillies scored two more runs on two hits. A two-run home run by Johnny Callison. There were no errors, and no one left on base, and the score at the end of three, the Phillies four, the New York Mets won. You know, it's hard to imagine New York City without every kind of jazz from Dixieland to Progressive. Fortunately, you don't have to. Listen. <laughs> That's Backstreet Rag, a uniquely American sound. It came up the Mississippi out of New Orleans with the Negro jazz men who played it to the world. But they didn't stop with Dixieland and the blues. Little David's Fugue by John Lewis is a new sound that's part of a new generation. But whether it's the old jazz or the new, it's thirsty work for the musicians. And when they put down their instruments, they'll pick up a cold beer, often Rheingold extra dry. In fact, in New York City, where there are more kinds of jazz than in any other city in the world, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. Why do so many people like Rheingold? We don't know, but we must be doing something right. fourth inning. The Mets coming up as they trail by three. The Phillies with a four to one lead and the first man up will be the center fielder Gary Kolb. Gary a left hand batter hit into a force play his first time up. Batting at 261. He'll be followed by Jim Hickman and then Jim Schaefer as 
The Mets battle against Lou, Ber Lou Burdett. And the right-hander, who has given up three hits so far, starts to work here in the fourth. The pitch is in for a call strike. Lou making his first start for the Philadelphia Phillies. Started his major league career in the New York Yankee organization. Was picked up by Milwaukee from San Francisco. Pitch back to the plate is a little screwball that's high and away. It's one ball and one strike. Burdett likes to turn the ball over and throw a sinking type screwball. His fastball also moves away from a left-hand batter. Has a fair curve and a good slider. When he is on, he likes to pitch down around the knees and has normally very good control. One ball, one strike. And the pitch back to Gary Kolb is taken. A breaking pitch too low for ball two. Two balls and one strike. At the end of two, Pittsburgh one, Chicago nothing. Yankees at the end of three, scoreless against Cleveland. Nothing, nothing ball game. The 2 1 delivery, again the little screwball, palm ball type action, and the pitch is in for a call, strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Lou going to his forehead, then down to his chest, then to his mouth, and now to the rosin bag, and the Mets say, let's see the ball. They're checking it out for a possible spitter. He has that reputation. One of the strongest protesters against Lou Boudreau, Lou Burdett, I'm sorry, was Bertie Tebbets. Bertie, when he was the manager of Cincinnati playing against Milwaukee, even went so far as to take moving pictures of Burdett to prove that he threw a spitter. Burdett's pitch back to the plate as it high in the air in the center field. The center fielder, Adolfo Phillips, coming over to make an easy play. One away in the top of the fourth. The Phillies leading 4-1. to one. It brings up Jim Hickman, who singled on the sidearm fastball in the left field his first time up. Jim with his average going up, now batting at 221. Later on, Bertie Tebbets came over to manage Milwaukee and had Lou Burdett as his pitcher on his side, and for some strange reason, he never did see that Burdett ever threw a spitter from that day on. Next pitch back is a high fastball, and the count is one ball and no strikes. In fact, Bertie Tebbett said, now that he had a chance to watch him up close, he could see that he didn't throw any spitter. It all depends where you look at the picture. Now the 1-0 pitch is taken away, and it's ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Of course, there hasn't been many claims against Lou here of late because he hasn't been winning any ball games. He is on four this year. Two balls, no strikes. His pitch back to Hickman is low and away. Ball three. We're dead going for a breaking pitch and now asking for a new ball, and it's thrown out by Benny Smith. 3 0 count to Jim Hickman, the on deck batter, is Jim Schaefer. The pitch back to the plate is taken in for a call strike. Hickman taking all the way. Three balls, one strike. Mets trailing by three with one man out in the top of the fourth. Phillies have four runs and four hits, but two of the hits, two run home runs. Mets have one run and three. Three one pitch is taken for strike two, and Hickman going all the way down the line. They count at three and two. Lou Burdett. Now taking the signs from Pat Corrales. And his pitch to Hickman. Sidearm fastball hit hard. A one hopper down to Richie Allen. He has an easy chance fielding the ball. And completes the play to first base with an overhand throw. Two men out in the top of the fourth. It brings up Jim Schaefer, the catcher. Jim hit a line drive to center field his first time up.
Schaefer batting 167. He has been up only seven times. And his first pitch is slider. Swung on, it is strike one. One sixty seven is average at the start of the ball game. One strike count on the right hand batter. And Burdett now into the swing and back again. A sidearm fastball. It's low and away. One ball, one strike. One delivery by Burdett back to Schaefer is hit hard in the left field. A line shot coming over the left fielder. Alex Johnson to field the ball. He throws on in and Schaefer holds at first base. So Jim has his second hit for the New York Mets. Both hits line shots to left field and brings up Al Jackson. Mets now with four base hits to equal the total of Philadelphia Phillies, but the Phillies leading in the ball game four to one. Jackson sacrificed his first time up. His average of 128, five hits and 39 times up. Out in left field, a group of Met Rooters saying, let's go Mets. First pitch to Jackson popped up in foul territory. Richie Allen has plenty of room. He is under and his catch retires the side. No runs. One hit, no errors, and one man left. And the score at the end of three and a half. The Phillies four, the Mets one. And now coming in here is Bob Murphy, but first a word from Viceroy Cigarettes. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Not too strong and not too light. The taste that's right. You get the word, it's Viceroy, a cigarette that's specifically designed to taste the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. If you're a filter smoker, you've already discovered some brands taste too strong, as if they didn't even have a filter, and others taste too light. You know the kind. They never seem to satisfy your taste. But do you know about Viceroy? Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the filter for the taste that's right. When you try them, you'll agree. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Not too strong and not too light. The taste that's right. Last half of the fourth inning, Adolfo Phillips, the center fielder, will be leading off against Al Jackson. Adolfo was struck out in his only time up in the second inning. Little Al has been struggling with his control over the first three innings. He hasn't been wild from a standpoint of walking hitters, but has been unable to place the ball where he wants it. Inside the high, it's ball one. Jackson, to be effective, has to keep the ball down. He's a sinker ball pitcher, and he tries to keep all of his pitches down around the knees. When he's just a little bit too strong, or a little bit too wild, and the ball comes up. It makes it a tough game for him. Low and outside, two balls and no strikes on Adolfo Phillips. Adolfo is a right-hand batter. He stands well back from the plate, feet close together. Here's the 2-0 delivery, and it's wild outside, ball three, three and 0. Oh. Peanuts Lowry coaching at first base and George Foghorn Matt on the lines at third. Pitching 3-0. and oh. It's over at the knees for a strike 3-1. and one. He was taking all the way. Pat Corrales is the on-deck batter and then Bobby White. Now Jackson has his sign. 3-1 delivery. In at the knees for a strike 3-2. and two. One 
once again, manager Gene Mack had Adolfo Phillips waiting Jackson out. Al has been just wild enough tonight to where manager Gene Mack is going to make him work for everything. He'll have the hitters waiting it out. Now three and two on Phillips. Alvin siding in on Schaefer's target. The 3-2 pitch. Foul ball. Just barely nicked it on the bat handle. Comes on the ground. Right straight back in the count remains. The three balls and two strikes. Philly is in front. 4-1. to They've had two run homers hit by Bobby Wine and Johnny Callison. Now the payoff delivery. A swing and a miss. He struck him out. A good comeback by Jackson. He got behind Adolfo Phillips 3-0, and he came back to strike him out. Al's third strikeout. It brings up Pat Corrales. One thing that really hurt little Al in the second inning, with two outs and nobody on, he had Pat Corrales two strikes, but then he grew wild. He walked Corrales. Made a pitch too good, a pitch that came up high on Bobby Wine, and Wine hit a two-run homer. Fastball in at the letters for a call strike. Bobby Wine is the on-deck batter. We're in the last half of the fourth. Way outside as he pulled the string, one ball and one strike. Here's the 1-1 one, one delivery. Low and inside, it's ball two. Well, the Mets would love to win on, win one on Casey's birthday. A couple of years ago, the only ball game they won at Dodger Stadium all year long, Tracy Stollard beat the Dodgers on Casey's birthday. Pitching two and one. Swing and a miss by Pat Corrales in the count even. Two balls and two strikes. Pat Corrales is a native of California and has had about four years grooming in the minor leagues. Pitching two and two. Chopper off the plate. It is fouled on the third baseline. No play. Corrales starting to run it out. Now turns and heads back. Even count, two balls and two strikes. Phillies are six and a half games out of first place. They wound up their road trip going very well, winning four of their last five. And they came home an optimistic ball club. Pitching two and two. Low and inside, a full count, three and two. Al using a lot of pitches here in the early part of the game. He was three and two on Adolfo Phillips, then he struck him out. Now he's three and two on Pat Corrales. Now the payoff delivery. It's low, ball four, and Corrales draws his second walk. Now Bobby Wine getting a hand as he comes up. He hit one in the upper deck in left field with Corrales on base in the second inning. walk given up by Jackson. Al has walked three and struck out three. Allowed four runs and four hits. It's in up and ease for a strike on Bobby Wyatt. Wyatt a light hitter, but he really popped the home run. It landed about halfway of the upper deck in left field.
Jim Heckman holding against base runner Corrales. Kirby held up in time inside. One ball, one strike. Jackson tows the pitching slab, checks his runner. Now delivers outside the high. Schaefer looks at first, no throw. Two balls and a strike. Two one pitch. Outside is ball three, and again, Al finds himself under the pressure. Control such that he has been working consistently behind the hitters. Now, Wes Westrom has sent the side to the bullpen, and Tug McGraw is warming up again. Three one delivery. Foul ball, a back up into the crowd. No play, and the string is out. Now let's keep an eye on Pat Corrales and see if Gene Mock has him running. One man away, a three and two on Bobby Wine. Jackson has had the stuff to strike out a hitter, but he's been fighting his lack of control. Now Corrales edges away. He's holding up. Bounced foul back toward the Philly dugout. No play. An afternoon game tomorrow and an afternoon game Sunday. Now Jackson checks the runner. The 3-2 pitch with a runner holding a grounder down to third foul. So for the second time, Bobby Wine fouls it off on three and two. Bobby, a product of Long Island, and he was honored by the residents of the East Northport Huntington area the last time Philadelphia came to Shea Stadium. Full count, Corrales leads off. Here's the pitch. And it's popped foul, but it may not be playable. Running hard for it is Jim Hickman beyond his reach. Lands on the track down the right field line, bounces up into the crowd. Third time in a row that Wyan has fouled it off on three and two. All three times, manager Gene Mock has not been running Pat Corrales. stretch. Three two delivery fouled again. That's four in a row. Well Al Jackson has found this to be the time for a little positive thinking and he certainly has been doing it. Al has been fighting a lack of control but in the three two situation he's been on the strike zones four times in a row. Three and two again. Fouled again. That's five. And it's enough to try the patience of any pitcher. Five in a row fouled off on three and two by Bobby Wine. Fortunately for Corrales, Mock has not had him running. Three and two. Hit hard. Off the glove of Charlie Smith. Picked up by McMillan. No throw. And Ryan is on with a base hit. That ball was blistered by Bobby Wyatt. Charlie Smith trying to come up with it on the first stop. It almost tore the glove right out of his hand. And Wes Westrom is on his way to the mound. We may get a pitching change. Bobby Wine, after fouling five pitches in a row off on three and two, comes up with a base hit on a wicked smash off the glove of Charlie Smith. 
And then our manager, Wes Westrom, is on the mound, and we will get Tug McGraw to relieve for Al Jackson. One out here in the fourth inning. Little Al has worked three and one-third. At the moment, has given up four runs, allowed five hits. Walked three and struck out three. Doug McGraw made his major league debut as a starting hitter in Chicago on Wednesday. But he was knocked out of the box in the first inning. Doug had a lack of control in that opening inning, and it hurt him. While the pitching change is being made, we'll bring you right up to date on the other ball games. Right now, Jackson leaves the mound, heads for the dugout, and Doug McGraw takes over in relief. Pittsburgh two, Chicago nothing at the end of three innings in Pittsburgh. It's Ernie Brolio against Don Cardwell. Cincinnati got two runs off Don Nadabark in the first inning at Cincinnati tonight. Reds two and the Astros nothing after one. Nadabart against Joe Nuxall. Here are the warm-ups in Milwaukee. For the Giants, it will be Bob Shaw, 10 and 6. For the Milwaukee Braves, right-hander Hank Fisher with a record of four wins and four losses. The Dodgers and Cardinals have played one inning in St. Louis with no score. Claude Osteen pitching for the Dodgers. He's 8 and 11. Kurt Simmons, 6 and 10, is on the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals. In the American League, at the end of four and a half innings on a two run homer by Jose Askew, Cleveland leads the New York Yankees 2 0 at Yankee Stadium. Sonny Siebert, 10 and 6, going for Cleveland. Al Downing, 9 and 9 for the Yankees. That's Cleveland two, the Yankees nothing after four and a half. Detroit nothing, the White Sox nothing at the end of one. Mickey Lolich for the Tigers and Juan Bizarro pitching for Chicago. Minnesota one, Baltimore nothing after one. Dave McNally for the Birds and Jim Mudcat Grant 11 and three for the Twins. The warmups at Kansas City, Mike McCormick for Washington, Jim O'Donoghue or John O'Donoghue for Kansas City. And the Red Sox are on the West Coast playing a night game with the Los Angeles Angels. Lou Burdett will be leading off against Tug McGraw, and before he steps in, we step out for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're tuned to WGY, a ton of the miles connected to your station for Mets Baseball. with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner from County Mag Stadium in Philadelphia. Phillies leading New York 4-1, to one, and the Phils have runners on first and second, one out in the last of the fourth inning. The Mets look for the bunt, and Burdett takes a blazing fastball inside, one ball and no strikes. 20-year-old Tug McGraw from Vallejo, California, an apprentice pitcher who's had only one year in pro ball has quite an arm. He throws very hard. Inside of the knees is ball two. Doug's problem is a control problem. Anytime he gets his curve ball and his fast ball over, he is really tough to do business with. But on a number of occasions, he has been bothered by a lack of control. 2-0 delivery. Burdett swings at it and pops it foul. Hickman coming up toward the fungo circle is under it and makes the catch. Lou Burdett, a pretty good hitter, and they were letting him try and drive a 2-0 fastball up into the seats. Two outs, two men on. Top of the batting order for Cookie Rojas. Rojas has two hits and two times at bat. He's hitting 300. First and second, two men down. McGraw's pitch to Rojas, a curve over, strike one. And a banner here tonight in Philadelphia, boosting Tug McGraw.
Here's the pitch by Tug. A ground ball hit past the mound. McMillan picks it up. Throws hard to first in time, and the side is out. Ball might have been slowed up just a little bit by Tug. Handled by McMillan. So Tug comes out of the bullpen to retire Burdett and Rojas and the Phillies. No runs, one hit. No errors, two left. At the end of four, it's Philadelphia. Four runs, five hits, and one error. New York, one run, four hits, and no error. And there will be a couple of special events coming up on the Mets' homestand that starts Tuesday night against Pittsburgh. The Mets playing the Pirates Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon, and again on Thursday night. And Wednesday afternoon, the Mets once again will have Senior Citizens Day. Turned out to be a very popular day for the young at heart the last time it was held at Shea Stadium, and so the day is being repeated. Senior citizens, 60 years and over, will be admitted for a 50 cent service charge. That's the 2 o'clock Wednesday afternoon ball game between the Mets and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Then a week from Sunday, August the 8th, Banner Day at Shea Stadium. The banner craze that started in the polo grounds is known nationwide by baseball fans. Banners are here tonight at Connie Mack Stadium. The Mets have seen banners in every ballpark in America they've been playing in. And if you saw Banner Day at Shea Stadium last year, it was really a day to remember, a day to enjoy. The banners entered from the center field gates. There was an orderly parade completely around the warning track as the judges tried to make up their minds, and there were so many great entries. It certainly was not an easy task. Mets were anxious to hold Banner Day while the young people are still out on the summer vacation. Remember, first and second prizes will be awarded in the various categories by Macy's and also a grand prize presented. Banners carried by one person, by two persons, and three or more. In the fifth inning, Chuck Hiller is up against Lou Burdett. Burdett over the first four has scattered four base hits. Right in there, strike one call. Chuck Hiller has reached safely on an error charged to Bobby Wine and grounded out to first baseman Dick Stewart. Burdett winding. Down comes his pitch. Hit hard on the ground, but right at the shortstop, Bobby Wine. He guns it across to Dick Stewart in plenty of time, and Hiller is out. One out, nobody on. Roy McMillan coming up. Max single to right in the first. Fly to center in the third inning. One hit and two times at bat. and pitches and the breaking ball is over strike one Bills have hit two two run homers in this ball game they lead four to one ground ball hit toward the hole backhanded by Bobby Wine the throw in time oh what an arm Bobby Wine has anytime he feels the ground ball he's got a great chance to throw you out he's got quite a howitzer for an arm Fans, remember, Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the filter for the taste that's right. You can get a pretty good argument when you can pair the throwing arms in the National League of Leo Cardenas of Cincinnati and Bobby Wine of Philadelphia. Johnny Lewis takes Burdett's fast foot on the outside corner, strike one. Cranks up the pitch to Jenny. Misses inside and low. One ball and one strike. Lewis continuing his bat rampage here this evening has reached on a walk and single to right field. Johnny Lewis has had eight hits in his last 11 times at bat.
A 1 1 delivery. Breaking ball at the knees for a strike. One ball and two strikes. Now Lewis cocks the bat. The 1 2 pitch. Smash on the ground. Taken on a hop by Cookie Rojas. Thrown to Stewart and the Mets are out. That was a low line drive that was hit hard, but right at Rojas, who played it on the first half. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. So we've come halfway at the end of four and a half to score. The Phillies four and the New York Mets one. Is this one of those nights when you're not yourself? You'll feel more so when you listen to this. This song gets sung over and over at Irish parties and picnics until the singers raise a ferocious thirst. Then they change their tune. Come fill up your glasses and drink what you will. I'll land you every day. of inning number five, Johnny Callison coming up against Tug McGraw. He hit a shot over the 32-foot high right field wall for a two-run homer his last time up. So Callison is now tied with Willie Mays for the Major League lead in home run. Beats is at 23. Tug McGraw winds. Here's his pitch. Ground ball hit to second base. Hiller digs it out of the dirt. Pegs on quickly to Jim Hickman, and Callison is out on one pitch. White Sox nothing, and the Tigers nothing at the end of two. Minnesota leads the Orioles 1 nothing at the end of two. Washington 1, Kansas City nothing after an inning and a half. Cleveland leading the Yankees 2 nothing after five and a half on a two run homer by Jose Askew. Breaking ball to Richie Allen is in, strike one. Pittsburgh two, Chicago nothing after four and a half. Cincinnati two, the Houston Astros one at the end of an inning and a half. Slow curve lashed in the air to center field. It may drop in. It does for a base hit. Played on a hop by Gary Cole and fired back in. Hit right down on the end of the bat. The Giants and the Milwaukee Braves are being held up because of rain tonight in Milwaukee. The Dodgers and the Cardinals no score at the end of an inning and a half. Osteen against Simmons. One out and one on. The batter is Dick Stewart. Cleanup batter Stewart has been struck out and lined into a double play started by Roy McMillan. Now the pitch by Tug McGraw. Low and inside. One ball and no strikes. One thirty ball game tomorrow afternoon. Actually, one thirty-five. We're on the air with our radio broadcast and telecast at one thirty. Outside and high, two and zero on Dick Stewart. The Phillies are third in the National League in home runs. Milwaukee Braves and Cincinnati Reds are first and second. Then he stopped. And he did step off. There's one for you. The Mets win the argument. And Allen goes back to first base. And it certainly proves that umpires 
do a very human understanding job and certainly try to do the right thing. Umpire Vinny Smith walked out to the mound. He called Ed Sudol and Billy Williams over and said, let's talk this over now. Let's be sure. Let's do the right thing. And they were convinced after thinking it over that McGraw had stepped off. Now the 2-0 delivery. It's outside, ball three. Reflects nothing but credit on the umpires, whether they had reversed the session or not. The fact that umpire Vinny Smith working the plate went out to the mound and immediately called his comrades in and said, let's talk this over. The draw behind on Stewart, 3-0. and Comes in with a fastball, 3-1. and Richie Allen on first base, one man out. We're in the last of the fifth inning. 3-1 delivery. A towering fly ball to right. It's going to be fairly deep. Johnny Lewis is under it, waiting for it to come down. Makes the catch. So Tug McGraw, behind on Stewart, 3-0, comes back to get him out on the fly ball to right field. Alex Johnson, the left fielder, comes up. He was robbed of an extra base hit by Charlie Smith in the second inning on a hard grounder right over the bag. And was retired on a pop fly to Hiller in shallow right field in the third inning. Now McGraw checks his runner. Pitch to Johnson. Curve is too high. One ball and no strikes. Alex Johnson batting at 3.23. Throw to first, not in time. That was a quick move to first by Tug as he tried to pick off Richie Allen. There goes Allen swinging a foul ball back upstairs on a hit and run play. One ball and one strike. In St. Louis, the Cardinals got a run off Claude Osteen in the second. They lead the Dodgers 1-0 at the end of two. The Dodgers right now have a two-game lead over second place Cincinnati. The National League race has certainly tightened up. The Braves are only three games out. The Giants, who have played all year without Orlando Cepeda, only three and a half games out. Breaking ball of beauty, a strike on the inside corner, one and two. Orlando Cepeda, one of the National League's truly outstanding sluggers, is about ready again to start throwing his offensive weight around. Giants have stayed close, only three and a half games back without him. There goes the runner. Here's the pitch. It's high the peg by Schaefer, not in time. A stolen base for Richie Allen. He got a big jump on Tug McGraw. Schaefer had no chance to throw him out. Breeze has freshened up considerably. Blowing from right field across the diamond toward left. Now it's two and two on right-handed batting Alex Johnson. And the pitch by McGraw. Hit hard, a base hit to left field. Richie Allen waved around third by George Myatt. He will score. And the Phillies lead five to one. Stolen base by Richie Allen helped to build the run. He put himself in scoring position. Comes in on a single to left field by Alex Johnson. The batter is Adolfo Phillips, the center fielder. Nothing for two. Phillies lead by four. They're in front, five to one. Ball one. Overhand fastball taken low inside.
Throw to first. He almost caught Johnson napping. One ball and no strikes on right-handed hitting Adolfo Phillips, the Philadelphia center fielder. The runner goes. A high fly ball hit the left field. It's deep. Christopher's on the track. He's by the wall. He may have room. Makes the catch against the fence. Bills were flying hit and run, and Phillips almost hit the ball into the seats. One run, two hits, no errors, one left. Five innings complete. Philadelphia, five runs, seven hits, and one error. New York, one run, four hits, and no errors. Next week in Shea Stadium, Harry Walker's hard-hitting Pittsburgh Pirates are in for a three-game set. A Tuesday night, a Wednesday afternoon, and a Thursday night game. Friday night, Saturday afternoon, and a doubleheader on Sunday with the Chicago Cubs. A Wednesday afternoon game with Pittsburgh will be Senior Citizens Day. Senior citizens, 60 years and over, will be admitted for 50 cent service charge. And another real big event is the Banner Day doubleheader between the Mets and the Cubs a week from Sunday, the 8th of August. After the seven home games with Pittsburgh and Chicago, the Mets will be going to the West Coast for the last time this year and then returning to Shea Stadium for one of the biggest weeks in the history of Shea Stadium with the Cardinals, the Dodgers, and the Giants all coming in for the last time this year. The Mets are hoping that Ron Hunt, the National League's all-star second baseman last year, might be able to try it out in an exhibition ball game against Williamsport on Monday night. Mets have gone virtually all year without Ron, who was hurt in the spring, was just getting going, when he was hurt on May 11th in that collision with Bill Gagliano in St. Louis. And it hurts to lose a ball player in the caliber of a Ron Hunt. Now Charlie Smith up. He bunts the ball down the third baseline. A good bunt. Allen comes up. He won't throw. It's a base hit. Charlie is a power hitter who rarely bunts, and he really used the element of surprise plus good execution to bunt for a base hit without a throw being made. Now Joe Christopher batting for the third time. Joe knocked in the lone Mets run with a sacrifice fly to right in the first. He grounded out to short in the third inning. Low and outside. One ball and no strike. Bills lead 5-1. Mets hitting in the sixth inning. Hit hard, a line drive, caught by Wine, the throw to first, not in time. Smitty gets back. Well, move that line drive over inches either way, and it was a base hit. It was hit that hard by Joe Christopher, but it went directly at the shortstop, Bobby Wine. Christopher has done a good job of staying ready when not being used in the regular lineup. He has conscientiously stayed with his hitting practice. And when given a chance to step into the lineup, he's hit the ball hard tonight. <laughs> Gary Kolb facing Lou Burdett. Breaking ball is in the dirt, handled by Pat Corrales. Sixteen thousand four hundred and twenty-one that paid attendance to that, which is a good crowd considering the fact that it rained all afternoon and did not stop raining until about 45 minutes before the game. Ground ball hit down to first. Stewart fires the wine. They've got one back to Stewart. Double play. No runs, one hit, no errors, none left. 
the end of five and a half to score. The Phillies five and the New York Mets one. It's very hard to sell sheet music in Jamaica, you know. They make up songs whenever they need them, like this. Having a party, eating rice and peas, dancing happily as you please. Mmm, charming lady with a very nice smile. Think I'll talk to her for a while. Think I'll talk to her for a while. When Jamaicans get together for a party, the beat is calypso and the songs are made up on the spot. The party was hilarious as it could be, but in the morning there was news for me. The penny was a man's way wedding tune on his wife. The smiling lady is now my wife. The smiling lady is now my wife. And when the singer finds his throat a little dry, something refreshing will be improvised. Probably Rheingold beer. In New York City, where there are more different kinds of people than in any other city in the world, more people drink Rheingold Extra Dry than any other beer. Why do Jamaicans like Rheingold? We don't know. But we must be doing something right. Last of the sixth inning here at Connie Mac Stadium, and now as the Phils come up to hit against Doug McGraw, coming up to follow the action for you, Lindsey Nelson. Thank you very much, Bob, and hello, everybody. Pat Corrales is coming up now for the Phils. You're in the bottom half of the sixth, facing left-hand pitcher Tug McGraw. The Phillies are leading by a score of 5-1 to one as McGraw double pumps. And pitches as a swing and a high fly ball to shortstop, taken now by McMillan on the edge of the outfield grass. That brings up Bobby Wine. He had the two-run homer in the second inning. And he had a base hit off the glove of Charlie Smith at third in the fourth. The homer in the second by Bobby Wine was his first of this season. This is his fourth year in the majors, and it was his 15th career home run. And it's high over the outstretched glove of Jim Schaefer all the way back to the screen. Ball one to the right-hand batter, Bobby Wine. The Mets scored first in the ballgame tonight, getting a run in the top half of the first inning. But the Bills came back to get two on Wine's homer and the second. Two more on Callison's homer in the third and another in the fifth. They lead 5-1. Fastball's outside. 2-0 the count. Pitch is low and away. Since early in spring training, Chuck McGraw has been working on a move to first base that consists of a step back off the rubber and then the throw over, and it's taken uh, a long time for him to work it out. Here's a 3-0 pitch. And it's high. He has walked Bobby Wine. Going to the bottom with no hope. Cleveland threw in the uh, key. Nothing. Nothing. Threw, but he got the all nodding. Jose Askew had a two-run home run in the fifth. of McGraw's move to first. He's worked on his lot and has it down pretty good now, so he used it tonight and was called for a balk by Billy Williams, the umpire. Sign was relayed immediately by Ed Sudall, the umpire at first, but the umpire behind the plate, Benny Smith called the conference of umpires, but uh, the decision was reversed. When two of them had seen him step off the rubber before he made the motion. First. Here's a bunt that is fouled up the first baseline by Lou Bredet. Trying to move the runner along with one man out. Strike one to Bredet. Lou Bredet, 38 years of age. One time, he and Warren Spahn formed the big one-two of the Milwaukee Braves. The National League Lost it to the Dodgers in the playoff in 59. Changed off the sacrifice to the boom cut. It's a two-strike count now to Lou Burdett. Nice goal, West Virginia. Has made his home for a number of years now in Sarasota, Florida. One time was the property of the New York Yankees. 
Credit to the Braves. Real and right Johnny Sane to the Yanks, and he came back to haunt the Yankees by beating them three times in the 1957 World Series. Curveball, swung right in the middle. Good curveball by Tug McGraw. Gets very that swinging. It is Tug's first strike out of the evening. And brings up Cricky Rojas, who is two for three. Five runs on seven hits. The Mets one run on five hits. Jim Hickman at first is holding against the runner. Bobby Wine. McGraw steps off the rubber and bluffs the throw to first. No ball call this time. Except by the crowd. Here's the pitch. High and away. 1 0 now to right hand batter, Cookie Rojas, playing second base tonight. Place of Tony Taylor. Still suffering the after effects of the collision last weekend, last Friday night at Chase Stadium in New York when he collided with center fielder Johnny Briggs. Johnny Callison was the third party in the collision. Here's the fastball outside. 2 0. This is the first of a three-game series. It'll be a single. Good the afternoon. We're going to get tomorrow at 1.30. Jack Wisher will pitch tonight for the Mets and Chris Short for the Phillies. Here's a 2-0 pitch. It's low. Last ball, 3-0 now to Rojas. Callison is waiting on deck. Warren takes his lead at first. 3-0 delivery. Fired right in there for a call strike. It's three and one. is up and throwing now in the bullpen for the Mets. Three-one pitch swung on and popped up foul back of the plate. Schaefer's trying to get to it. But this one is play. Right. Playing a little cat mouse with him for Benny Smith and trying to get back to play that foul ball. It runs the count full now, three and two to Rojas. With two men out, Bobby Wine at first will be running on the pitch. Rojas in and waiting. They're all looking for the side. Up and off the stretch. McGraw stepped off the rubber and bluffed the throw to first. Again, McGraw is split. Wines running. Pitch is going on and lays with the right to the blue. Wines continues on to third as Cole comes up with the ball, plays it for again. Holding at third is Bobby Wines. Cookie Rojas is on his first with his third base into this game. We pause for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're tuned to WGY 810 on the dial, Schenectady, your station for Mets Baseball. This is Lindsay Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at Connie Mack Stadium in Philadelphia. Johnny Callison is coming up now with runners at first and third, two men out. The Phil's leading five to one. Callison has sacrificed with a two-run homer and grounded out second to first.
Allison and Willie Mays are tied for the Major League lead in home runs with 23 each. Here's a breaking ball high. It's ball one. The American League lead in home runs is jointly held by Willie Horton of the Detroit Tigers and Harmon Killebrew. All the Minnesota Twins, they have hit 22 each. Doug McGraw with a 1-0 pitch to the left-hand batter. Breaking ball, that misses low. Two balls and no strike. Richie, a one on deck by the Philly. There's a lot of pennant talk today in the city of Philadelphia, especially in the newspapers. After the Phils shut out the Pirates 5 0 last night. The Phillies are six and a half games out of first place. Here's 2 0 pitch. Rise on so number go. What's behind for you know, on the draw? It's a handful of dirt and fires it on at the ground. A little unhappy with the last pitch and the last call. Three balls, no strike. Three old pitch. And it's in there for a call strike as Callison was taking it. Well, Callison is a dangerous man. Be getting that ball into that strike zone with care. Because he can swing it. And this will be a 3-1 pitch. With Wine at third base and Rojas at first base. 3-1 delivery. Low and he walks it. That loads up the bases. And Callison goes to first, Rojas to second, Wine holds third, and Richie Allen is coming up. Larry Bernard throwing in the Met bullpen. Manager Wes Western pacing in the Met dugout. The Phillies should make it to the pennant in the World Series. They have a lot of tickets and things already from last year. It's a pitch swung out and missed for strike one. The Phillies say that they know what can happen to teams out in front. They know from experience last year. McGraw is trying to pitch himself out of trouble here. Allen is one for two in a walk in tonight's game. Right hand batter, strike one delivery, swung on and fouled off. Rolling back, it's two strikes. Richie Allen started tonight with a batting average of 318. delivery with the bases loaded goes high and away and it's one and two the Phillies are leading in this game by a score of five to one Curveball in there, windmill that left arm a couple of times. 
as he saw Richie Allen miss, and he drives off the mound. No run, one hit, two walks, no errors, three left, and the score at the end of six is the Phillies five and the Mets one. And now it's time for another unusual fact from the Viceroy Hall of Records. Tonight's story takes us back to 1920. It was the Dodgers against Boston. The up yell, play ball, and that they did. They played and played and played. After nine innings, the score was tied. And after 26 innings, it was still a tie game. And that's the way it stood, because it was too dark to continue. That's one record that's going to be hard to beat. And in the Filter Cigarette League, you can't beat Viceroy. Because Viceroy is specifically designed to taste the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong, like some brands that taste as if they didn't have a filter, and not too light, like others. You know the kind. They just don't seem to satisfy your taste. But Viceroy is not too strong, not too light. Viceroy has got the filter for the taste that's right. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. Not too strong and not too light. Top of the seventh, the Mets trail by four, and they're sending up Jim Hickman to face the veteran right-hander Lou Burdett, who tonight made his first start as a Philadelphia Philly. He came here on May 30th. Had a record with the Phils of no wins, two losses. Record with the Cubs this year, no wins, two losses. Pitch is low for a ball to Jim Hickman. Jim singled in the second, grounded out third to first in the fourth. in there for a call strike. In his heyday, everyone accused Lou Burdett of throwing spitball. But in recent years, when he had been less effective, criticism has subsided. Here's a big time away. It's two and one. critics of Burdett, one long stretch was Bertie Sebitz, who was managing the Cincinnati Reds at the time. Sebitz later became Burdett's manager at Milwaukee. It's in there for a call strike, two and two. After Sebitz got to Milwaukee and had Burdett pitching for him, he said after seeing him up close, he decided he didn't throw a spitter at all. Burdett always denied it. He said well, the best pitch he had was the one he never threw. That batter kept expecting it and it never came. Here's the 2-2 delivery. Swung on it on the ground to short. Bobby Wine has good position in the hole. Place to first in time. Hickman grounds out short to first. And that brings up Jim Schaefer, the catcher. He has slide to center and lined the single in the left. The Phillies five, the Mets one here in the top half of the seventh inning. With pitcher Tug McGraw on deck. Larry Bernard continues to throw in the Mets bullpen. Luber Dad with a pitch. Strong on hit on the ground up the middle, and Bobby Wine is over up with it. Clears the first. And in Looks as though that ball would go through, but Bobby Wine ranged over and took it in the glove hand behind the bag at second and gunned it on the first in time to get Jim Schaefer. Two men out. And Bobby Cowan, a uh, Billy Cowan, is at the bat rack. Billy Cowan is at the rack with Doug McGraw due up here. And it's going to be Cowan coming out to bat for McGraw. Bernard continues to throw in the bullpen. Doug McGraw is out of the game. He pitched two and a third. Two and two thirds. Gave up one run on three hits. Struck out one and walked two. 
Billy Cowan. Is hitting 184. He's had three homers and nine runs better than. Cowan's a right-hand batter. Up here with two men out, nobody on base. Blueberry dead, winds and fires. In for a called strike. Burdett and Spawn roam together with the Milwaukee Braves. Finally, we're broken up sort of two of the younger pitchers could benefit from the association with Joey J rooming with one of them and Carl Willie with the other. Time is called now. Pat Corrales goes over to the dugout. Got a word from the manager and comes back. five, the Mets one. Mets batting in the top of the seventh. Lubert at with the pitch. Swung on it, missed strike one. Second strike two, it is to Billy Cowan. Count of 0 and 2. But now it's has finished warming up in the bullpen. He'll be coming in in the bottom of the seventh. Sidearm delivery low and away as we just saw a little crossfire falling off on the third base side. <laughs> Playing a foul ball on the left field line, given a run by Alex Johnson. It's drifting to the stands, but he's there and makes the catch. Alex Johnson making the catch right at the barrier by the corner of the stands where they jut out down the left field line in foul territory. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Towards the end of six and a half innings is the Philly five and the Mets one. Well, next you're going to hear a lullaby, but remember to stay awake for what comes after. <laughs> This song brings back friendly laughter and the clink of bottle against glass. And today, as yesterday, what's in the bottle is often Rheingold Extra Dry. In fact, in New York City, which has the largest Jewish community in the world, more people drink Rheingold than any other beer. How come? We don't know. But we must be doing something right. Lachayim. For the New York Mets now, Bobby Klaus has come in to play shortstop, and Larry Bernard is the pitcher. Klaus is at short, and Bernard is the pitcher. Klaus will bat second in the batting order, and Bernard will bat ninth. Dick Stewart will be leading off. Larry Bernard came into the ball game at Wrigley Field in Chicago yesterday in relief in the bottom half of the 12th inning with the score tied 1-1, and Ron Sando came up. On the second ball pitch by Bernard, Sando hit it into the seat for a home run, and the Cubs won it by a score of 2-1. So Larry is being brought back here tonight. Ed Roebuck is throwing just loosely down in the bullpen area at this moment for the Philadelphia Phillies. And I still warming up now. His last six, Jim Schaefer, fires the ball down, second around the horn, and Dick Stewart. Here's coming up. Stewart obtained by the Phillies. 
over the winner from the Boston Red Sox. In exchange for left-hand pitcher Dennis Dennis. Stewart began his major league career with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Fastball inside, ball one. As a minor leaguer, Dick Stewart once hit 66 home runs in a season in the Western League. It was said at the time that he did not make that many catches the same year. Here's the 1 0 pitch. Strong run in on the ground is short. Taken by Klaus, and he side arms over to Hickman in time. No question that Stewart's fielding ability has taken a turn for the better. One away, Alex Johnson coming up. He's one for three, thing to drive and the run the bottom of the third. and West Covington are a platoon these days in left field. Playing at a minute. Speaking of fielding ability, he's always had those problems with us in Major League Baseball. West Covington during the great years in Milwaukee could clean the bat. But he had a problem now and again with the fielding plate. Here is a crossfire delivery swung out in base. So Bernard goes ahead with two strikes to Alex Johnson. But that's nothing new in baseball. We've had our Zeke Veneros and our Sneed Jolly. And has been playing the bat, but um, had a problem catching the ball. I expect we'll always have him. Here's a swing and a foul ball back and out of play. The description I always liked best of Benura was the baseball writer who said that he was like the wedding guest in the rhyme of the ancient mariner. He stopped one of three. Two strike delivery, swung on and fouled off. Right off the corner of the Met dugout. Chris Canizero is setting out on the step and he was trying to bend over and halfway fell into the dugout and getting out of the way of that foul ball off to the right side. One away, nobody on base. Two strikes to Johnson, and the Phils are leading the Mets by a score of five to one. Two strikes, it get on the ground foul on the third baseline. Ruben Amaro is up and throwing down the bullpen area now for the Phils as well. That would be a late-inning defensive move. Sometimes he is brought in for Stewart at first base. Amaro is a man of many talents. He can be played almost anywhere. And is. Two strike pitch. Swung on it on the ground, back to the mound, taken by Bernard, and he plays over in time. Two away, and Adolfo Phillips is coming up now, the center fielder. Struck out, struck out, fly to left. Adolfo Phillips. That is Major League Chant as a result of the altercation between Ricky Allen and Frank Thomas. Thomas was placed on $1 waivers. It opened up a spot on the Philly roster, and Adolfo Phillips was brought up from Arkansas. Pitch is low for a ball. Arkansas of the Pacific Coast League. I always hesitate a little for saying that because it always sounds a little odd. Here's the 1 0 pitch. And it's low, 2-0. Two, oh. two men out, nobody on base here. Mets will be back at Chase Stadium on Tuesday night against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the Cubs will be in next weekend at Chase Stadium. Playing the ground ball is short. Bobby Clark gets the big hop. Goes on the run in time, and Larry Bernard Gets the Phillies out in order here. In the bottom of the seventh, no runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Scores the end of seven full innings is the Phillies five and the Mets one. 
Now, let's check the scoreboard with scores of other games all around the majors in the National League. It's all night action. At Forbes Field in Pittsburgh, the Cubs and the Pirates go to the bottom half of the eighth inning with the Pirates leading 3-0. Ernie Brolio is pitching for the Chicago Cubs. Don Cardwell for the Pittsburgh Pirates. At Crosley Field in Cincinnati, the Houston Astros and the Reds go to the top half of the fifth with the Reds leading 2-1. Don Nottabark for Houston, Joe Nutsall for Cincinnati. Joe Gaines home in the second with nobody on for Houston. In a game that has been twice delayed because of rain at County Stadium in Milwaukee, they're going out of the bottom of the second. The Giants three and the Braves one. Bob Shaw going for San Francisco. Hank Fisher for Milwaukee and Bob Sadowski in the second inning. Willie McCovey had a second inning home run and Tom Haller had a second inning home run with one on for the Giants to give them their three runs. And in St. Louis, the Dodgers and the Cards are going to the bottom of the fourth with the Cardinals leading 2-0. Lord Osteen for the Dodgers, Kurt Simmons for the Cards, Lou Brock in a third inning home run for the Cardinals. Over the American League, at Sox Park in Chicago, the Tigers and the White Sox are going to the top of the fifth, Chicago leading 1-0. Mickey Lolich against Juan Pizarro. And at Minnesota, they're going to the top of the sixth with the Twins leading Baltimore 2-1. McNally against Grant Leffrey, home in the fifth with nobody on. Kansas City, they go to the fifth with Washington leading Kansas City 2-1. McCormick against O'Donoghue. Kevin Harris and Frank Howard have had the home run. In New York, they're going to the ninth with Cleveland leading the Yankees 2-0. Siebert, McMahon in the eighth, Downing, Ramos in the eighth, Askew had a homer. And Boston is at Los Angeles against the Angels in a later start. We go here to the top half of the eighth where the Phillies leading by a score of 5-1. to one. Chuck Hiller is up to lead off and Lubert at first pitches in there for a call strike. Killer is nothing for three in the game. The death pitch off speed and outside, one and one. Ruben Amaro is playing first base in place of Dick Stewart for the Philadelphia Phillies. The death pitch is low for a ball. Burdett has not won a Major League Baseball game since September of last year. When he beats the Cincinnati Reds 3-0 for the Chicago Cubs at a time when the Reds were trying to win the center. There's a swing and a drive deep to right. It's way back there off the bat of Hiller. It is going, going, and this one is gone for a Chuck Hiller home run. Number four for Hiller over the fence in right field. Get a leadoff homer here in the top half of the eighth inning as Chuck Hiller hits it out. And quickly it is the Philly five, the Mets two. Now Bobby Klaus is coming up for his first time in the game. Klaus is hitting 197. He has one homer and 11 runs batted in. Bobby Klaus is a right hand batter. Ed Robot gets up to throw again now in the bullpen to the Phil. It's in for a strike. The concern that a manager has in circumstances like this is that he has a 38-year-old pitcher on the mound who has now a three-run lead. And figuring that he might tire, he wants to get him out before he is irreparably damaged. Here is the pitch in for a call strike two. So he has Roebuck throwing down there in the bullpen. But Burdett has come back strongly here with a two-strike count to Klaus. This pitch is low. It's one and two. And Klaus asks that umpire finish to look at the ball. He believes it's in play. Swing and a miss as he threw it by Bobby Clark. And that is the first strikeout in this game for Lou Burdett. 
Johnson. One away, nobody on base, and Johnny Lewis is up. Lewis is one for two and a walk. Superdad is not as fidgety as he once was. He's still fidgety enough, but uh, seems to have calmed down a little bit in his manner of delivery on the mound. Here is the pitch low. His manager, Fred Haney, at Milwaukee, used to say that Burdette would make coffee nervous. He would go everywhere before throwing the ball. One-o delivery, and it's low for a ball. He goes behind two and zero to Johnny Lewis. Lewis had seven hits in the doubleheader yesterday, including two home runs at Wrigley Field. It's in for a strike. Two and one. The Phillies lead the Mets by a score of five to two here. We're in the top half of the eighth inning. Two one pitch. And it's low. So now Burdett goes behind. Three and one to Johnny Lewis. That takes a moment, takes off the glove, rubbing up the ball. And a 3 1 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. It's a full count of 3 and 2. in the yellow pancho as his delegation down in the right field corner and uh, they're getting a little attention as a few Philly fans paraded a Philly banner down in amongst them there's another banner being paraded up around here near the home plate area there are a considerable number of Mets fans by the way in this crowd here's a pitch swung on and fouled off Count holes at three and two. One man out, nobody on base. Nice Night Stadium, which runs for Shide Park in Philadelphia. Now the payoff pitch. And it's high. Johnny Lewis draws a walk. That is only the second walk issued by Burdett in this game. It brings up Charlie Smith. Hit by a pitch ball, fly to center, and bunted his way on last time. Hey, here's your chance to see Joe Namath play professional football tomorrow. The New York Jets get into action in their big interest squad charity game at Columbia University's Baker Field. Game time is 2 p.m. For tickets, call OR7-1400, and all proceeds go to your police athletic league. Gary Wagner is up and throwing in the bullpen now for the Phillies. Gary Wagner. But that pitch to Charlie Smith is inside high. Ball one. Lewis is the runner at first, and his one man out. Where the Phil's leading 5-2. The dead looks to get his side and catch you past the rally. Has it. There's a swing and a drive in the left field for a base hit. One hop by Alex Johnson. 
And Johnny Lewis holds it second. Charlie Smith is on it first. And Joe Christopher is coming up representing potential tying run at the plate. We step out for station identification. This is the New York Mets Baseball Network. You're tuned to WGY, a ten of the miles, Schenectady, your station for Mets Baseball. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at Tiny Mac Stadium, and here comes manager Gene Moss out of the dugout with Joe Christopher representing potential tying run at the plate. Moss is on his way to the mound. He has Jack Paulson throwing down there with Gary Wagner now. Paulson just got up, and so Mott is going to talk things over with Lou Burdett for a moment before making any quick decisions. That way his bullpen will have extra time to continue throwing. Mets have begun a rally here with a walk in the base since they hope to keep going. In the top of the eighth inning. Time goes to the bullpen. That's going to be all for Bridget. As manager Jim Martin going to take any chance on him tiring out there on the mound. Ed Sudol is walking all the way into the bullpen. They indicated Jerry Wagner who's wanted. He's a big favorite here. Here's a young man who has come on to catch the eye of the fans. And Jerry Wagner walks in as he does. The doctor and his Mets fan delegation down in uh, the right field stand there. Wave white handkerchief. So that will be all for Luber Dutch. He has pitched seven and one-third innings. And in which he has given up two runs on seven hits. Struck out one and walked two, and Jerry Wagner he leaves him in the hand. It's for Luber Dutch. <laughs> and as Gary Wagner warms up, let's take a look at scores. Here. At Connie Mack Stadium, the Phillies are leading the Mets by a score of five to two. In New York, the Cleveland Indians scored three in the ninth, and they have defeated the Yankees by a score of five to nothing. As Siebert gets the win, as Don McMahon came out of the eighth inning, and Al Downing started and takes the loss. So they ask you had a two-run homer. In the National League, going to the bottom of the eighth now, Pittsburgh three and Chicago nothing. The end of five full innings, the Cincinnati Reds five and the Houston Astros one. At the end of an inning and a half, the Giants three, the Milwaukee Braves one. At the end of four, the Cardinals two and the Dodgers nothing. The American League at the end of four, the White Sox one, Detroit nothing. At the end of five full innings, the Minnesota Twins two and the Baltimore Orioles one. The end of four innings, Washington two and Kansas City one. Boston is at Los Angeles against the Angels in a later start. Now Joe Christopher. At the plate, facing right-hand pitcher Gary Wagner. Johnny Lewis, the runner at second. Charlie Smith, the runner at first. Pitch is in there for a called strike. has won four games and lost three this year for the Phils. This is his 36th game appearance. Earned run average 3.09. Bringing a ground ball. It's headed for the hole. Going through for a base hit. Johnny Lewis gets the green light at third. He's coming home. He scores. Charlie Smith holds it second. And Christopher's on at first with a ground single through the hole in the left and a run batted in. It is a Philly five. The Mets three and the Mets have the tying runs on base. Gary Kolb is coming up. That run is charged against Lou Burdett, statistically. <laughs> Gary Kolb is a left-hand batter. Nothing for three in the game tonight. 
Charlie Smith, the runner at second. Joe Christopher, the runner at first. Gary Wagner, the pitcher off the stretch. Playing a ground ball foul back at first base. Out of play. A count of strike one. Jim Hickman is in the on-deck circle. There is one man out. Jack Boston continues to throw in the Philly bullpen. And that's uh, pushed across two runs here in the top half of the eighth inning. Now Wagner sets and deals. Overhand breaking ball hits in the dirt. Rolls away from Corrales. Runners hold. Runners holding up as Corrales was scrambling after the ball. With an overhand curveball that hit about a foot out in front of the plate. And Corrales had a little trouble corralling it. Larry Miller is up and throwing in the med bullpen. Gary Kroll is up and throwing in the med bullpen. Med runners lead at first and second. This is a 1-1 pitch. Swung on and fouled off. Out of play, and it's one and two now to Gary Cole. J-O-L-B. Jim Hickman is coming up with two men out and two men on. So the match here would hope for the long ball from Jim Hickman. So for tonight, Hickman is one for three. First pitch and it's low for a ball. Phillies five, the Mets three. With Met runners at first and second. Wagner's pitch. Low as Hickman started to go and laid off. Count runs to two and oh. Catcher Jim Schaefer is on deck for the Mets. for his sign and has it. The 2-0 pitch. And it's in there for a call strike. Two and one. Mets at second, Christopher at first. Again, Wagner set. 2-1 pitch. Swung on and hit in the air to left. And Alex Johnson is coming on. He's there and he makes the catch. So the side is off. That's picked up two runs. On three hits. No errors and two left. Scores into seven and a half innings. There's the Philly five. And the Mets three. Here's a bit of advice about your car that may come in handy. A safety tip from Shell. Smooth steering is critical. Has your car got it? at all speeds? As soon as you can, try this easy road test, courtesy of your local Shell dealer. Pick a smooth stretch of road where it's legal to go 60 miles an hour. First, hold a steady speed of 40. Then move up to 50. Then up to the legal limit. Hold both hands lightly on the steering wheel and feel carefully. Does the wheel shake as your speed increases? Or does it shake at 50, for example, but not at 60? Either way, it's a good bet your wheels are out of balance. Double check by looking at your front tires. If they're wearing unevenly in spots, you can be almost sure your wheels need balancing. See your shell dealer. Balancing wheels doesn't take long, isn't expensive. Incidentally, if you should need new tires, your shell dealer can show you just the right size at just the right price. 
At Shell, service is our business. Yankee Stadium in New York. The final score was Cleveland 5. The Yanks nothing. For Cleveland, five runs on six hits and one error. For the Yanks, no runs. Only four hits and no errors. Sonny Siebert started and got the win. Don McMahon came on the eighth and finished up. Downing started and took the loss. Pedro Ramos came on in the eighth inning. Jose Askew had a two-run homer for Cleveland in the fifth. And then in the ninth inning, Chuck Hinton had a solo homer, and Fred Whitfield had a two-run homer. So all Corrales is up here to lead off for the Philadelphia Phillies in the bottom half of the eighth. Walk, walked, and popped out to short. Larry Bernard is the pitcher for the Mets. He came on in the seventh inning and got the side out in order. Here is a pitch that's low for a ball. Corrales is a right-hand batter. Bottom half of the eighth inning. Pitch is in there for a call strike. One and one. Arch 1-1 one, one delivery is low for a ball. 2-1. This game started on time and we have had no interruptions because of weather, although it rained throughout the latter part of the afternoon and early evening here in Philadelphia. 2-1 pitch. Swung on it in the out of center field. Gary Cold is there. And he makes the catch. There's a lot of room in center field here at Johnny Mac Stadium. 447 feet to the little wall that cuts across the corner out there in straightaway center. 405 to the light tension to the center field side of the scoreboard. 420 to the left center. Coming up now is Bobby Wine, who had a two-run homer to put the fills ahead. In the bottom of the second, the Mets had scored first in the top of the first and were leading at the time 1-0. Since then, Wyan has singled and walked, so he's two for two in a walk for the night. Pitches in for a strike. This pitch is in for another strike. Two strike shot. Bobby Wine resides in the area of Huntington, Long Island, and so does Larry Bernard. Two strike pitch. A little high. It's one and two. looks for a sign from Jim Schaefer. The one-two pitch is outside. Two-two. Two-two delivery. Swung on and foul back out of play. The count holds two-two. Phillies have five runs on eight hits. The Mets have three runs on eight hits. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed, and Bernard strikes out Bobby Wine. Bernard's first strikeout. He has retired five consecutive batters, and Gary Wagner is coming up. Wagner is a right-hand batter. Bernard's pitch. In there for a call strike. Fastball. Final score. 
in the National League, the Pittsburgh Pirates have defeated the Chicago Cubs by a score of three to one. Here's a swing and a miss. Don Cardwell went all the way to get the win for the Pittsburgh Pirates. Ernie Brolio started and took the loss. Lindy McDaniel came out of the eighth and finished up. Here's a swing and a high fly ball to right field. Johnny Lewis started in, now drifts back. He has it lined up, and he makes the catch. Larry Bernard with two strong innings has retired six consecutive batters. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Score at the end of eight full innings is the Phillies five and the Mets three. If you'd like to purchase tickets for any of the upcoming home games of the Mets at Shea Stadium in New York, it's a very easy, simple thing to do because there are a number of convenient ticket locations. The advanced ticket window at Shea Stadium is open seven days a week. It's located at entrance D, and it's open weekdays 8 to 6 and weekends 9 to 5. For the special convenience of commuters, there are Met ticket offices at Pennsylvania Station and at the Grand Central Terminal. At Penn Station, the Met ticket office is in the Long Island Railroad waiting room. Open six days a week. Weekday is May 6th and Saturdays 8.30 to 4. At the Grand Central Terminal, it's at the foot of the 42nd Street and Vanderbilt Avenue round. Open six days a week. Weekdays 8 to 6, Saturdays 8.30 to 4. For Long Islanders, there is a Met ticket office at Macy's in Huntington, Long Island. It's in the Walt Whitman Shopping Center, and it's open during regular store hours. Reservations can be made for box and reserve seats at any of the Howard Flow stores, Child's Restaurants, or Calico Kitchen in the New York area. As we go to the top half of the ninth now, Johnny Stevenson is going to bat for Jim Schaefer, and Ed Cranebull is going to follow to bat for Larry Bernard. The Mets are two runs down as we go to the ninth. Gary Wagner winds and fires, and the pitch to the left hand batter is low for ball one. Johnny Stevenson has been up 28 times at five hits. One double, one run batter, and he's hitting 179. This pitch is in for a call strike. It's one and one. A one one delivery to Stevenson. Swung on and laced into center field for a base hit. Rammed on the button. Taken out there now by Adolfo Phillips and played back. And that brings up Ed Cranville to bat for Bernard. Last Friday night, it was a pinch single by Johnny Stevenson, his lone run bat at the end of the season that beat the Philadelphia Phillies in an extra inning ball game. Cranville coming up. Ed has been in uh, something of a batting slump of late. His season's batting average is now 263. He has eight homers and 40 runs batted in. But the Mets have the base runner. That sets up the situation of potential tying run at the plate with the Phillies leading 5-3. Ruben Amaro at first base plays behind the runner, Johnny Stevenson. Gary Wagner off the stretch, pitches a curveball in there for a call strike. for the Mets now is Chuck Hiller who had the eighth inning home run. Jack Balch is up and throwing again the Philly bullpen. Overhand curveball. Swung out and missed. Strike two. To Ed Cranefield. Gary Kroll is throwing in the Mets bullpen. 
Mets are hopeful that they will have to use them. They'd like to see this game go to the bottom half of the ninth. Is a pitch low. One and two not a crane pull. Wagner working here in relief of Lou Bredette, who is the pitcher of record. Bredette worked the first seven and a third and was charged with three runs. Breaking ball hits in the dirt. It's dug out of there by Pat Corrales. Then it was that overhand breaking ball, and it hit just about at the front of the plate. Corrales dug it up. Two and two to Crane Pool. Defensively, the Phils play Crane Pool straight away. Stevenson leads it first, the 2 2 pitch. Swung on and hit in the air to left, and Alex Johnson goes back and he's there, and he makes the catch. Stevenson returns to the bag at first, as Trainville hits the ball well to left field. One away. Now Chuck Hiller, who had won before, he had a home run over the right field fence in the eighth inning. Ron Swoboda comes out to the on deck circle now. as a prospective batter for Bobby Klaus, who is scheduled up next. Wagner pitch swung on and fouled off on the ground like a first out of play. Down a strike one. Hiller hit his home run in the eighth off Lou Burdett. Mets have had two hits off Wagner since he came in. Christopher had one to drive in a run, and Stevenson had the one to open up this inning. Jack Balchin continues to throw in the Philly bullpen. Now the pitch swung on and fouled off. Two strikes to Hiller. As Gary Wagner again came over the top and delivering the curveball. One man out. Wagner looks for a sign from Corrales. Two strike delivery. It's high. One and two. <laughs> Phillies five, the Mets three, with the Mets batting in the top half of the ninth inning. One man out. Johnny Stevenson takes his lead at first base. Wagner deals, and it's a breaking ball high and away. 2-2. Two, two. Wagner takes a moment to take off his cap and mop his brow. First time. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Swung on and hit high in the air to short left field. Alex Johnson comes in. He's underneath and waiting for the towering pop fly. Makes the catch and going back to the bag. At first is Johnny Stevenson. Ron Swoboda is coming up now to bat for Bobby Klaus with two men out. The Mets are down to their last out in this ballgame. Boda has been in a batting slump of late. He's hitting 236. He has 16 home runs and 39 runs batted in. Mm -hmm. 
Swoboda's mother and father are here tonight. His mother was in Chicago yesterday and then came here to Philadelphia. Here's the pitch high, and his father came up from Baltimore, where the family home is located. One ball and no strikes to Swoboda, with the Phillies leading the Mets 5-3. Pitch is low and away. Wagner goes behind, 2-0. and oh. Johnny Lewis is on deck. Wagner takes a little while now before settling down to work again. Looks in for his sign. The 2-0 pitch. Swung on and foul back out of play. Count of 2-1 to Ron Swoboda. Swoboda is now 21 years of age. And his first season in the Major League. have the defense swung around toward left. 2-1 pitch. Swung on and missed. It's 2-2. Two -two. Again, Gary Wagner is taking his time, rubbing up the ball. Tugs at the bill of the cap. Standing behind the rubber. Now throws the rubber and looks in for the sign. Johnny Stevenson takes the lead at first. There are two men out. Wagner with a 2-2 pick. Swung on and hit in the air to left center field. Moving over is Alex Johnson. And so is Phillips. And they run it together. But the ball is taken in the air for the out. That retires the side. With Johnson and Phillips both running together. And it was taken by Adolfo Phillips for the out. So the put out goes to the center fielder as the ball game is over. And the Phillies have defeated the Mets by a score of 5-3. to three. In the top of the ninth, the Mets had no runs. They had one hit, no errors, and one left. We'll be back in a moment with a final summary in totals. Right now, the final score of the game is the Phillies 5 and the Mets 3. And now you're going to hear music to eat on some Yada spot. And if you want to drink a little beer with it, that's all right with us. Spaniards in New York City have brought us the sounds of Andalusia and the Basque provinces in songs like Yo Te Dare. You'll hear this song in places where you can savor chorizos in Samidas. And as the rhythm and your thirst quicken, it may be that you'll call for more cerveza rhino. It's a fact that in New York City, where there are more Spaniards than in Almazan, more people drink Rheingold extra dry than any other beer. Por qué? Quien sabe? But we must be doing something right. At Connie Mac Stadium in Philadelphia, the Phils have defeated the Mets by a score of 5-3. to three as Lou Burdett gets the victory, his first of this season, and starter Al Jackson takes the loss for the New York Mets. Before the start of the ball game, the Mets paraded out onto the field, each carrying a letter and a greeting that was spelled out for Casey Stengel. Happy birthday, Casey, it said. And the Phillies also joined in, as did the umpires and some of the baseball writers, with everyone here at Connie Mack Stadium wishing Casey Stengel a happy birthday. Well, I know the thing that would have made Casey happiest, and that would have been a victory. And it looked as though the Mets might get it in the top of the first as they scored one run to go out in front by a score of one to nothing. 
However, Bobby Wine had a two-run homer off Al Jackson with two men out in the second, and that put the Phils in front, and they were never headed. Johnny Callison had a two-run homer in the bottom of the third. He is 23rd of the season. It ties in with Willie Mays for the major league lead in that department. That made it 4-1. to one. The Phils got another in the bottom of the fifth to make it 5-1 as Jackson had given way to Tug McGraw. Jackson was charged with four runs and McGraw with one. Then the Mets came alive in the eighth inning as Chuck Hiller had a leadoff home run to make it 5-2. Johnny Lewis walked, Charlie Smith single, and that was all for Lou Burdett. Joe Christopher single to drive in Johnny Lewis, and the Mets had their second run of the inning and their third run of the ball game. That was all the scoring. The Mets threatened in the top of the ninth when Johnny Stevenson has a pinch hitter led off with a single, but then Craneville flied out, Hiller flied out, and Swoboda batting for Klaus also flied out to center field to end the ball game. Final totals in the game for the Phillies. Five runs on eight hits and one error for the Mets. Three runs on nine hits and no errors. Lubert up the winner. He's one in four. Al Jackson, the loser, he's won five and lost 14. A crowd of 16,421 paid here at Connie Mack Stadium tonight. Tomorrow afternoon, we'll be back here on the air at 1.30 with the second game of the series. Jack Fisher will pitch for the Mets and Chris Short for the Philadelphia Phillies. Final score again, the Phillies five, the Mets three.